All right, so today we have something, well, there's nothing unusual for this channel, I guess. Um, but I, I guess an unboxing is fairly unusual. Uh, I've wanted something like this for quite a long time, and I haven't seen much on it. Uh, so I figured I would do an unboxing of a 3D printer. Uh, got it on sale and with uh, a refund for a dead SSD on Newegg.ca. Um, I know that they're not the most reputable brand, but I took precautions ahead of time. Uh, so this is the Anet A8 Plus, uh, which I'm not sure if it's just fairly new or not many people trust Anet printers anymore, uh, just due to their history. Uh, but I've already, uh, with the money I saved, uh, I got a couple MOSFET boards and a mean well power supply that's overrated by 10 amps. But I thought I'd do an unboxing just to sort of see what it's like in here. And just, you know, to, I guess, show people what's in the box, because this printer doesn't seem to be something that's super common right now, at least. Uh, so from what I understand, the main difference is the bigger build area, 300, and, yeah, 300 by 300 by 350 uh, vertically. And also it's an aluminum frame now instead of acrylic, which the old one apparently was. So the main issues that I've heard with the ANETs are the power supply and the MOSFETs that control the hotbed and to a lesser extent the nozzle. Um, so we have our hotbed here, which is an aluminum substrate with tempered glass, I imagine. Uh, quite a bit of flux left from where they were soldering that connector on there. Seems, you know, not great. Uh, only because they have a status LED on the bottom of there. Uh, so I guess our build area is probably about this section here. Um, I'm assuming you wouldn't go screws. <clears throat> Uh, then we have the little, I'm not sure if this is the full controller or just the, uh, just like the board that lets you control the printer itself and not the actual brains of it. Uh, it's supposed to be magnetically movable. Doesn't seem to have any magnets in it. Um, it also seems quite large for what it is. Maybe there's more to the board than I'm thinking. I'll probably pop this open and have a look at it, but it seems like they could have made this a bit smaller. We have some pretty craptastic looking, uh, not split loom, but whatever you call this spiral loom, I guess. Uh, and some cable ties, which is, I guess, nice to have included. Uh, couple spare fuses and a micro SD card and reader, although I'm assuming since it's from China it'll be called Transflash. Okay, brief interruption there. Uh, so next we appear to have some balloons or small condoms. I have no clue what these are for. <laughs> um... Maybe you use them as, like, on the rubber feet to stop it from moving around. Although these are already really rubbery. Okay, so, balloons are tiny condoms. You get those in the box. Uh, you get a little bit of test PLA filament. Kind of doubt that's enough to calibrate it. I'll show you picks up later. Uh, some more zip ties. Oh, and then it looks like a belt. Um... Doesn't look like it's a fiberglass reinforced belt, so I suppose that would be prone to stretching. Uh, although fiberglass belts, at least the ones that I've experienced, are somewhat stretchy as well. But it has to do with the orientation of the of the strands. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of wiring, and then here we have our linear bearings housed in plastic. LMBUU, uh, they don't seem to be like a, a, like SKF or, you know, some sort of big name brand for bearing. Uh, not super surprising. This just appears to be, yeah, a bunch of generic hardware. Uh, these are metal. But yeah, these are plastic with, um, threaded metal inserts, which is nice. Uh, not threading into plastic. I'm curious if these parts are 3D printed. They look really nice, so I kind of doubt it. I've had very little experience with 3D printed stuff. Hopefully that's supposed to be at that sort of an angle, and it's not bent. I don't see any signs of the 
it looks like actually powder coating on this so I don't see any signs of that being bent so looks like powder coated metal parts which is nice power cord which I will be throwing out promptly because Chinese power cords are usually garbage uh, decent detail on the switch the wiring is all kind of thin for my liking um, I might replace all of that at some point same with the MOSFET boards I'm going to put substantially thicker wiring on those uh, you got a handful of tools oh actually a, a screwdriver with like a, a collet for retaining the bit and some knockoff I'm sure Exolite side cutters those will actually be really nice I can take my proper Exolite ones out of my toolkit and I can just have these really shitty cheap ones in there so that's pretty cool that's nice um, screwdriver looks like that sort of acetate handle uh, the rubber grip is not really rubber or that grippy that's not a great sort of feeling but I mean you know functional and then yes yeah, my allen keys and spanner and stuff like that uh, we've got a small fan which is probably quite loud and I'll probably want to replace it at some point and it looks like we do have a 3d printed part already uh, yeah that's quite obviously 3d printed and that'll be for cooling I mostly plan on printing ABS so that's not gonna be a factor but that's a really nice fit uh, it's a 24 volt fan I thought these printers were on 12 volts so maybe they're running at a half voltage uh, we have another cooling fan there uh, oh I guess this is like an example 3d print I'm guessing PLA I can't imagine this is oh you know what this is probably for holding the spool of like filament itself so that's also kind of rough looking I hope I can get better prints than that uh, a bunch of springs a bunch of hardware uh, so from what I've heard from ANET printers they sometimes don't thread their bolts uh, it looks like that's not the case this time so that's good And we have another handful of 3D printed parts for the assembly. So it looks like the main parts that are going to be under the most load perhaps are uh, actually like injection molded or something. Uh, sort of brass, I can't remember what you call these, but like a whatever nut. So that'll be where the extruder goes. And well, maybe not actually. That might be one of the print bed, print bed guides. So then if we take this stuff out carefully we've got uh, yeah this will be the main control board uh, so I might take this out of here actually yeah you'll have to take the cover off of this thing to well I guess maybe not wire it up but it would certainly make it easier uh, we have here I'm guessing these are like the stops oh no these are the These are the stepper motors and they have these sort of springy uh, whatever you want to call them flexible shaft couplers I've been poking around with steppers myself for uh, some other projects which is also part of why I bought this for prototype and stuff we have our super shiny careful of no reflections and doubtless <laughs> very cheap power supply uh, it's unfortunately gonna be this thing got here really fast compared to the power supply I ordered very nice attention to detail peeling that off after it was installed it does not feel very substantial at all definitely going to be ditching this as soon as I can 15 amp oh so the power supply order is actually double rated I'll go ahead and just pop that back in there So we've got two lead screws and six fairly hefty metal bars. That's where most of the weight of this thing is coming from, I think. And then we have our extruded aluminum bars. I have quite a few of 
few of those and that'll be pretty much everything except for an user manual probably an assembly guide is on the SD card uh, I guess they're saying have the filament on top I really hope I can have it on the side because filament on the top seems like something that's really wavy uh, in terms of the aluminum cross section it seems reasonably thick um, might still wobble a bit I don't know uh, I'm certainly seen some pictures of 3d printers with thicker sections than this and I believe that they are all the same thickness yes and then over here we have ah this will be our extruder so I'm curious I'm not sure if this thing is all metal or not it's certainly not all assembled. It's kind of loosey goosey in there. Um, I guess that's an all metal hot end. I'm not entirely sure. Unless they're also talking about these being metal. Um, it's got some injected molded parts here too, and then I guess that's tension there and that's the wheel you clean out every now and then and then as far as the wiring to it uh, it is wire that is heat resistant with that sort of slightly grippy rubbery feeling uh, like a fiber um, insulation I did just see a small nick there already which is kind of annoying and then there's also a thermocouple that doesn't use uh, that same type of wire but this thin stuff Usually it's pretty thick insulation too on thermocouples. So all in all, nothing's jumping out at me is particularly awful. Uh, ex except for the power supply, of course. Uh, that SD card reader is probably no good either. Well, it, I mean, it probably functions. It's probably not great though. So I'm hoping this actually has build steps, but I'm kind of doubting it based on the size because the video they have is like an hour long. And... Uh, <laughs> Not very no audio on it uh it looks like this actually does have step-by-step -step instructions or at least rough ones so yeah um not a whole lot aside from that honestly uh yeah doesn't seem too crusty i uh, got here nice and fast did have customs charging on it uh, unfortunately for the shipping but yeah, that's basically the uh, quick unboxing of an Anet uh, A8 Plus 3D printer. Uh, so yeah, I guess if you want to see the insides of this or the uh, other control module taken apart a bit more, uh, you know, have a look uh, or let me know. I mean, <laughs> um, so I guess this is gonna be my project for the next little while of just assembling this thing and uh, hopefully finding a place to buy ABS on the weekend. Uh, Still don't know why they sent condoms. So uh, I figure I'll just add a couple notes as I see things. Uh, one of which is there is some sort of gunk on the actual guide rails, uh, like a yellowy, whatever crusty buildup. Um, so you'll want to clean your rails off with some rubbing alcohol uh, before putting it together. Yeah. So they sent this weird. Um, yeah, what do they call it? Winding pipe. Uh, I call it like a twisted looming or something. And I was worried that I wouldn't have any small enough split loom tubing. But actually, based on how much this has to expand, it looks like the 3A split loom tubing will do nicely. And it'll have... Uh, it's a bit stiffer, so it has more resistance. But I don't know if that's really going to matter a whole lot. And it's going to make this thing look way nicer. I might still do like... Uh, the cable track things um, but for now yeah I'll just do some nice proper quality split loom tubing instead of this that other crap so I've got the printer set off in my server room just for now um, couple issues with it the um, y-axis is homing in the wrong direction even though it is set up properly um, I don't know why. Um, when it, it homes the Z-axis and then goes back upwards, only one of the motors pops upwards. Uh, 
I'm assuming that's again just probably something to do with like firmware, uh, like the Z axis or the, sorry, the Y axis is. Uh, the other thing is I'm just missing some of those T nuts uh, to mount the controller board <clears throat> and the uh, spool holder. So, unfortunately, not going to get to print anything today. Um, maybe there's a firmware update for this, or maybe there's just something simple as to why it's going the wrong way. The limit switch is supposed to be at the back, the motor's in the correct orientation. I don't have X and Y axes mixed up or anything like that. Uh, so, almost there, but not quite. Uh, and then it's going to be about end of the month when that new power supply comes in. I have the MOSFET boards in already. But then you can see that split loom tubing. Uh, I really don't think that's going to add much, you know, res resistance to this at all. Um, the bearings are going to add more resistance than the tubing. So yeah, not 100% there, but yeah, the assembly was somewhat finicky. Took, I don't know, four or five hours overall going relatively slowly but it's the first 3d printer i've assembled um and then i you know i've learned things like well okay maybe i should build the actual whole frame part before putting the motors in sort of thing just so that i have stuff lined up these rods slightly not going in far enough on that side i don't know um i knew that it wasn't gonna be a perfect printer um but yeah if this does work it's gonna be really fucking nice big build area so I mean it's gonna work I'm gonna make it work but hopefully soon <laughs>